reckoning one degree of reduced temperature for every 200 feet of elevation, there will be found a difference of 10 degrees of temperature between Longwood, which is about 2,000 feet above the level of the sea, and the town, to which may be added two or three degrees more, arising from the sharp southeast wind loaded with humidity, which generally prevails in the high regions, and the consequent effect of the rapid evaporation, which will make a difference of temperature between it and the valleys amount to 12 to 13 degrees, which is actually the case. Add to the foregoing the frequent vicissitudes of temperature. At one moment assailed by a shower of rain and fog, to which the strength of the wind communicates such an impetus as to cause it to penetrate the best great coat in a few minutes. Shortly afterwards, the sky brightens, the weather clears up, and a scorching rays of a tropical sun beam forth. This continues for a short time and is suddenly followed by a repetition of fog, rain, and mist. This alternate drenching and scorching is of itself sufficient, as every medical man will allow to reduce the most violent inflammatory affections of the viscera, particularly in those of the abdomen. Thus, it appears that St. Helena, in addition to the general causes of insalubrity to Europeans, which are inseparable from a tropical climate, has also local and peculiar causes for being particularly unhealthy, as the great mortality to be hereafter described amply proves. The most trifling cold or irregularity is frequently succeeded by a violent attack of dysentery, inflammation of the bowels, or fever, proving fatal in a few days. If the most active and efficacious practice is not instantly adopted, a surfeit in a child, which in Europe would require nothing more than a little warm water to produce evacuation there, becomes a formidable disease requiring the most powerful remedies, and if neglected only for a few hours, terminates fatally. To Europeans, the climate is particularly unfriendly, and indeed, it is unfavorable to longevity in all subjects, even in natives. As by an examination of the parish registers, it will be seen that very few persons pass their 45th year the most prevalent complaints amongst the human species are dysentery, inflammation of the bowels, liver affections, fevers, all of them of a violent type, dysenteries especially, and liver affections, which are indeed frequently combined, appear in the most concentrated and fatal forms, baffling the prompt exhibition of the most active and powerful remedies, and in spite of the acknowledged skill and experience of several able practitioners. They are terminate fatally in a proportion never before witnessed in any British colony. During the first 12 or 13 months after its arrival at St. Helena, the 2nd Battalion of the 66th Regiment lost by these diseases 56 men out of a strength of 630, being 1 in 11. And still more recently, the Conqueror, which ship arrived in July 1817, has lost in 18 months, almost entirely by the same complaints, 110 men out of a complement of 600, besides 107 invalided and sent to England, being more than one-third of her complement. The number of deaths in the two battalions of the 66th Regiment I cannot positively state, but believe it to have exceeded 120 men. A reference to the official returns will, however, easily elucidate this point. In the West Indies, the proportion of deaths to the strength was, in the year 1814, as 1 to 25, and of deaths to diseases as 1 to 36 and two-thirds. Yet how trifling does mortality there appear when compared with that of St. Helena. At the latter place, it is so great that the governor and admiral, apprehensive of the effects which might be produced by a longer residence in the island, and doubtless desirous of alleviating their miseries as far as they could, set upwards of 70 of the sick in one month to England and the Cape, above half of those sent to the last named place who were the worst cases, have no doubt been ere now laid in their quiet graves. 
The conqueror was also sent to cruise the windward of the island for six weeks without, however, much benefit having accrued from the measure. It is worthy of observation that the raccoon ship company had suffered severely from dysentery and hepatitis while stationed at St. Helena, but when sent to the Cape, they recovered and became very healthy which state of health continued as long as the vessel remained there. But on her return to St. Helena, dysentery and hepatitis again appeared, and a heavy sick list followed. Another strong proof of the effects of the climate in producing dysentery is to be found in the instance of the female convict ship Friendship, which vessel arrived at St. Helena from England in November 1817. She remained eight or ten days to water. Dysentery soon made its appearance, and... In the course of four or five weeks, above 100 cases of it had occurred. Yet previous to her touching at St. Helena, not a single case of that complaint had taken place. The undeserved reputation for salubrity, which St. Helena has hitherto enjoyed, has probably arisen from its being so little known, except to seamen and others who, arriving after long voyages, were enchanted to find themselves on short anywhere like Dempier's sailors and who during the few days they remained found themselves relieved from scorbutic complaints by the use of water cresses with which it abounds and from its population being small and chiefly composed of natives who of course did not suffer so much from the effects of the climate they were born into as strangers until the arrival of the state prisoner very few europeans resided for a continuance upon the island and i can assert from personal observation that the greatest number of those now there even of the officers have suffered attacks more or less severe either dysentery or hepatitis in which number i regret to say i was myself included and that the number of the medical officers who have had the best opportunity of forming a correct opinion from actual experience on the island is that the climate is extremely unhealthy and especially that hepatitis and dysentery prevail to an extent and with a severity not to be paralleled even in India in order to convince the public that I neither am singular in my opinions nor inclined to exaggerate facts I beg leave to refer the reader to a medical inaugural dissertation upon dysentery and hepatitis in St. Helena composed for the degree of doctor in medicine at Trinity College Dublin a college surpassed by none in profound medical knowledge and learning and I believe unequaled in the severity of the examination which the candidate is obliged to undergo the essay in question was written by dr lee former surgeon to the second battalion of the 66th regiment at my departure from st helena very little amelioration was produced in napoleon's disease and being aware that he would not see any medical person imposed upon him by sir hudson low and suspecting from the experience of the past that means would be taken to prevent any person of his own choice from attending him when i received sir hudson low's order on the 25th of july to quit longwood forthwith without seeing any of my patients i conceived that humanity the duties of the profession and the actual state of my principal patient then very ill and requiring a daily administration of medicines forbade a compliance with such a command proceeding to napoleon's apartment i communicated the circumstance of my being ordered to quit longwood gave my advice for a continuance of the remedies he was then taking and the system which i thought he should pursue recommended him to choose a surgeon from amongst some gentlemen whom i named took my leave and departed after having furnished his valet de chambre with a supply of the medicine which he had been taken for some weeks which sir hudson low characterized as a breach of an order and a refusal to acknowledge the authority by which it was given to this i shall merely remark that having been employed in a civil capacity at st helena in a similar manner to other naval officers in the employ of the excise or the customs i was not subject to ordinary military discipline nor bound to obey any arbitrary orders especially when their execution would have involved a violation of humanity and a palpable breach of christian charity